Amen. So let me ask you a question. What are your wine skins? What, what are the things that you need to get rid of that are old? Different ways of thinking, different ways of relating. How we worked well together before probably isn't going to cut it after June the 9th and 10th. And so what really holds us uh, for 2018, and if the Lord tarries, 2019. What's really going to happen after all this announcement? I know a few things. You're going to hear a lot of gossip. You're going to hear a lot of people. That's the sad part. People love to gossip. People love to say things that don't make a lot of sense. And, um, you know, I think about the people who aren't here today. Uh, they're missing out, I think, on a real good word from the Lord. Um, I guess if, if you want to, to, the psychics will tell you anything. In fact, you can go to Casa Deg if you want to be stupid. I don't <laughs> recommend that. You'd tick the Lord off, okay? So don't go there. You, 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 could, you could look at all the things that, let me, let me save you time and money so you don't have to go to that. I, I, I do know this. In the fall of 2018, we're going to have new problems, new pressures. And new possibilities. I believe that. I, th I think there's a lot of things that are going to happen. They're going to be solely unique. And the question becomes, how do, we, how do we deal with those things? How do we handle new pressures, new problems, new possibilities? Well, I think one of the best ways to do it is with the right type of character. Character is very important. And, and, and character determines some things. And I think there's some things in the Bible that God teaches about character in your life and my life. And I want to I share three things with you today that I think will help us prepare for what's getting ready to happen next week. New problems will require creativity. New pressures will require new convictions. And new possibilities will require new courage. Let's look, first of all, at new problems, which will require creativity. You see, the, the, the bad news is that there's going to be problems in the future. You, you often hear me talk about that. I, I, I don't think that we can live a problem-free life. You're either in a problem now, just coming out of one, or one's coming around the corner. That's just life. Uh, so we're going to have some problems. But what I do know is, is most of our problems aren't generally the same problems. They're always new problems. And I, I like to call problems actually opportunities. There are, there are new opportunities around the horizon. But I know who can solve all of our problems. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. He's got the answer. But new problems, new opportunities require new solutions. As I said, many of the, the old ways of thinking, many of the old ways of relating, many of the old attitudes, they're just not going to work. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says this. The intelligent man is always open to new ideas. The intelligent man, woman, is always open to new ideas. In fact, he looks for them. About 10 years ago, a book came out called uh, 60 Excuses for Closed Minds by Dr. Tony. I, 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 let me share some with you. Ready for this? 60 Excuses for Closed Minds. It's a good book. still available today. We tried that before. Our place is different. It costs too much. We don't have enough time. We've never done it before. It's against company policy. That's not our problem. You're right, but we're not ready for that. 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 It isn't in the budget. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Let's form a committee. 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 Let's, a committee. Let's sleep on it. It's too much trouble to change. It's impossible. We've always done it that way before. Let's not make any changes. I mean, most people spend their time and energy never dealing with problems. They, they work around it. We never try to fix things, and we never try to work on new solutions. We're afraid of change. I was searching for some resource this week, and I'm no good at that. I generally don't surf on the Internet. I don't like it. I've got enough commentary and 66 books to study. It's real good stuff. But I wanted to find some stuff that would kind of be humorous, and you know, I do that once in a while. Not real good at it. But I was online, and I want to look for what people over 100 years old say. Because they're funny. At 100 years old and older, you can get by with a lot of stuff, right? 
And so I typed that in on the Google search. Now, I've never watched Ellen DeGeneres' show. That doesn't mean it's a good show or a bad show. It's just not my cup of tea, so I watch other stuff. But I, I, I landed, when, I, when you put that in the search, hers is the very first thing that comes up. And there's this lady, I didn't know that she's been talking to for like 10 or 15 years. And if you watch the show, her name is Gladys Hildy. That is one of the funniest ladies I've ever heard in my life. There's a compilation of many of her stories. Now, she's very serious. She's, when Ellen asked her questions, it just puts you in tears laughing. Like she asked her a question and she said, I love Jesus, but I do have a little drink once in a while. <laughs> she's at the gas station and she's putting in the card and, and, and it's not taking her credit card. And she don't have much time to live, you know. She's, she's just wanting to get out of there. She said, I don't care if you take my card or not. I just want to get out. Of, I mean, you'd have to hear the story. She, she was asked by Helen, do, do, do you ever seen the movie uh, Benjamin Button? And, 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 and Gladys said, well, I've seen it before. She said, Isn't it, it's about this man who is real old and he becomes real young. And Helen said, yeah, did you like it? She said, no. She said, it takes three hours to watch it and I'm getting older. I didn't care for it. I just thought it was funny. But I, I found one that was good. Uh, many of you are my age and older, my generation. You remember the Today Show a long time ago. They had really good stuff on. And they interviewed this guy that was 105 years old. And they asked him this question. 105-year-old man. I love this. This is so good if I can find it. I found it. In 105 years, I bet you've seen a lot of change. He said, yes, and I've been against every one of them. <laughs> That's like two caterpillars looking at a butterfly flying in there, and one of them says, you'll never get me up in that thing. We don't like change. We, we think it's uncomfortable. And 2018 and 2019 is going to have some challenges and some changes in store for Cornerstone. And I believe the Word of God says that we've got to continue to go and grow and develop. Attitudes are like diapers. Every once in a while, if you don't change them, it'll stink the place up. <laughs> and we've got to make some changes. And there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. I don't know if you've noticed this before, but when people are fighting against change, you ever notice it becomes more dif difficult because you end up with a bad attitude. And that's not healthy. It's not healthy in Christ. It's not healthy as a Christian. It's not healthy as a co-laborer i got to tell you something. In 2018 of the fall, there's a lot of things that we're not going to be able to control that are going to happen. You can't control the direction of the wind, but you can set your sail. Amen? Those are things that you can do. You can't control problems, but you can choose how to respond to those problems. God is a God of creativity. God is a God that wants you to be creative. And you say, well, I'm, I'm not a creative person. Well, that's not true. You are. In fact, we were made in the image of God, and God is very creative, for He is the creator. And so we've got to start becoming creative, and we've got to start thinking out of the box. And we need to have our spiritual ears and spiritual eyes open to a church this size in what God has called us to do. Number two, new pressures will require greater conviction. Conviction is a willingness to stand for things that you believe in. And if you don't stand up for something, you're going to fall for everything. And we need to start standing up for certain things. And the problem is, is the world begins to squeeze in on people. And we are now shaped and moved by the media and by the political winds and by social change. And the church of Jesus Christ in the world, in America today, even in states are changing to fit a certain narrative and culture that embraces everything, and that's not what God calls us to do. And so we let the world squeeze in on us. Instead of listening to God's word, we start listening to someone else. And then it begins to shape us. Listen to what Paul writes in Romans 12, 2. Don't let the world squeeze you in its mold, but let God remake you so your whole attitude of mind is changed. <clears throat> Folks, there's a lot of pressures in life. There's more and more each year. The pressures like materialism. Our young people today, I, I pray for them that they're, they're affected to even question their own sexuality. They're, they're placed in positions I would have never thought could have ever happened. Where today we take certain words that We've changed, and they have a different meaning today. 
And our kids have got to, to deal with that. I mean, sometimes I'm confused on what bathroom I'm supposed to go into. It, it blows me. I want, listen, when I go to the bathroom, I want to go to the men's bathroom. How about you? Sorry, I just do. Okay? I, I don't. Uh, girls are good. Amen, you girls. <laughs> I saw some girls back here going, I don't. I get that. I, I, want, I want to go to a Boy Scout meeting where there's Boy Scouts. I, I want to I go have a cup of coffee and feel secure where I'm having a cup of coffee and not. I just think we're letting the world squeeze us in. And, and, and the Lord says, don't let the world squeeze you and shape you. And so what we need is men and women and boys and girls who are hearing the clarion call of what Jesus has called us to do. That's why our mission statement, our vision is win the lost, disciple the one, and care for the community. Well, because it's all about relationship. Jesus gives us, you and me, if you're in Christ Jesus, you are called to let your light shine and to tell other people about Jesus Christ. You just don't leave that to the pastor or the teaching staff or the eldership. Each and every single person needs to be a witness. And you and I are going to be held accountable for that. And so we've got to be very clear about what we're saying and what we're doing. And that's going to take some strength. And the question is, where do you get your strength from? Well, the Word of God says in Isaiah 40, verse 31, those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength and it will be renewed. Psalms 19, 7 says, God's Word gives new strength. And there are going to be challenges that we're going to face. There's going to be pressures. There's going to be stress. I've been going through a season of asking the question, why do I have so much stress in my life, God? And now there's more going to be added. Why, why does that, why does it happen? Why do you put me in that position? And why do I put myself in that position? Paul answers that question so clearly in 2 Corinthians. Listen to what he writes. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. This is Paul. To me, probably outside of Jesus Christ, the greatest Christian that ever lived. He says this. We were under great pressures far beyond our ability to endure. So that we despaired even of life. But this happened so that we might not rely on ourselves, but God. That's conviction. Paul says these things were allowed so that I, we, might rely on God. Paul says, listen, I'm in a dark place. I'm depressed. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm despaired of life. But now I know why. Because I need to rely on God. We rely on others way too much rather than relying on God and His Holy Word and His Holy Presence in our life. And that's why there's stresses in life. And the question is, what, what are your convictions? What do they look like? How do you shape them? In fact, where do you get conviction from? Do you get it from... No, you don't get conviction from a textbook. You get conviction from experience. We learn some things about it. I, I got to... I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to hear me. If you're in Christ Jesus, and this is so important for you to understand, and it may bother some of you, but I've said this a thousand times. If you came here for pixie dust, you need to go to Disney because you're not going to get it here. You don't come to church to get your toes tickled. You come to church to allow the word of Jesus Christ, God's holy word, to pierce the heart. Yes. If you're in Christ Jesus, you are not going to stand before, him, stand before him and have to deal with your sins. They were covered at the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ covers if you're in Christ Jesus. But if you are in Christ Jesus, and it amazes me the one thing that many miss out on today, is you're going to stand before God and you're going to have a trifecta and you will give an account, I will give an account for my time, my talent, and my treasure. You will not escape that. And if that is true, and it is true, and it's in God's word, that 
ought to awaken you quickly. You are dealing with a holy God. And if it were not for Christ Jesus, his wrath would vaporize us right now. But you will not escape that day when he said, what did you do with my son and for my son? What did you do with your time, your talent, and your treasure? I think about that so much. And how many years I wasted. And sometimes I even question myself. Have I given you the right time today? Am I using my talent? I certainly understand the treasure concept. It's too biblical. It's too easy. That requires strength. That requires conviction. That requires saying, you know, just having a badge out here saying I'm a Christian. doesn't mean anything, folks. It's in here. And it's what God sees, not what Kevin sees. Remember, Jesus is teaching this story, this parable. You gotta, these old ways of thinking, they've got to stop. You can't take new wine and put it in old wineskins. New pressures will certainly cause greater conviction. But here's the last one. New possibilities will require... Greater courage. I think the fall of 2018 and beyond, if the Lord tarries, is going to be the greatest time ever for Cornerstone. I think it's in all my years that I've been here, I've never been in a position or ever felt there was a greater clarion call than the one that we got that we're announcing to you in all of our services on this campus throughout the week of hundreds of people that we see. And it's going to require some courage. And there are going to be some great possibilities. And I think God wants to do some great things in your life and in my life. I, I know this, God's not through with you if you will allow Him to use you. God wants to use you. You were created for a purpose and for God's good pleasure. And I think that we have to ask the question, God, what you've given me, the talent, the gift, those things in my life, Tell me, show me how I should use those things. It's not going to happen automatically. You have to be willing. What's crazy, it's free will, and you get to decide. You get to decide your eternal fate. How about that? Everything's a choice. But God's Word is so clear. If we go all the way back to the Old Testament, that's the stiff part of your Bible, those pages. There's a prophet. He was a farmer, too. His name was Hosea. What a great study. Can't wait to preach that. One day, his life. You might want to turn over there to the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12. Listen to what the prophet says. The Holy Spirit is speaking through him. These are God's words. And he says this. Plow new ground for yourselves. Plant righteousness and reap the blessing your devotion to me will produce. This is God talking to you today. It's time for you to turn to me, your Lord, and I will come and pour out blessings on you. Woo! Notice the verbs in there. You might want to underline them or highlight them. Plow, plant, and reap. What you sow is what you reap. And if you want your life to count for anything, and for those that are really saying, okay, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm asking you now, Lord, I want to be used for your glory. Whatever that might be, whether it's one minute, one hour, two hours, ten hours, whatever it is, God, I'm ready to plant, I'm ready to plow, and I'm ready to reap. God's word does not lie. It does not come, come back void. If you're in the new King James, it says fallow ground. In other words, that ground which is hard needs to be plowed up and it needs to be fertilized. Notice what it says, new ground. It doesn't say Notice, Old Testament, we're in the New Testament, Luke, in fact, it doesn't say old ground. He's talking about new ground. This, this is not new ground. New ground is right outside here, just a few feet. New ground's another 100 feet out. New ground's 100 yards out. New ground's one mile out. New ground's three miles out. New ground's 10 miles out. New ground is out there. Amen? Yes. Go into Judea, Samaria, at the outer ends of the world. I didn't write that. I didn't say that. Jesus Christ did. That's the commission. And he says, we need to plow it. 
We need to plant it. And then by doing so, we will reap, which I love that. It almost reminds me of what he said in Malachi, test me, prove me. I've often said, okay, God, I'll tell you. The only place in the Bible is over Malachi 3.10. And it's that one area he's talking about finances. Go ahead and test me. That's a big challenge from God. I'm cool with that. I'll, I'll test you, God. And he's been faithful. This word is faithful. And so when he says you begin to plow and you begin to plant, you're going to, if it's in the right manner, there is righteousness in that. And God says, I will use that and I will glorify myself and I will glorify my son, but I will bless your socks off. Amen. And for the life of me, I, underst- I, I don't understand why people won't take that challenge. Well, we're going to. We're going to take a big challenge and it's going to take courage. Let me ask you a question. What decisions do you need to make in your life right now? What convictions do you have that you you just flat know that you should be doing and you're not? I mean, you're just holding on to whatever it is and you're not letting go of it. Now, you don't have to tell me. that I, This has nothing to do with this. This is between you and God. So what decisions do I need to make with the challenges that are before? Listen, the future of, the, let me say it again. The future of Cornerstone is being set. I'm not the future. Just not. I'm right up in that area with old Gladys Hildy. <laughs> right? And we're beginning to see God do some amazing things. And after the 9th and 10th, there's a planting season. We have about 107, I was doing the calculation a while ago. There's about 174 days left in the year. Isn't that crazy? Talk about going fast. After that announcement, 174 days left. If the Lord tarries, what are you going to do with those 174 days? That is so scary to some of us that are getting up there in age. I think it's time for some of you to start cultivating and quit complaining. I I am so over. I love you. You know that. But but some who just... I I haven't seen anybody in this service do it yet, but boy, last night, I just called them out. Plow new ground. Don't plow old ground. Don't do the same thing we've been doing. It's already been done. What worked last year, what worked last week is not going to work for tomorrow and it's not going to work for the future. It's new ground. And he says, as a result of those who are willing, not just corporately, not just collectively, but independently, you, by yourself, because I promise you, you're not, if you're, if, if you, when, when the day comes, you're not walking into the gates of heaven with someone. You go in by yourself. I've told you, I've been to Jerusalem. I've been to the old city. I've been to the gates. Those gates, that's why Jesus said it's easier for a, for a camel to go through the eye of the needle, right? In those, those it's so narrow. You, you know, you got to turn sideways to go in. There was a reason for that. You're not going in with anybody but yourself to stand before God. Now, you think about that, too. In 10,000 years, it'll just, it'll just be starting. I'm daring you right now in the name of Jesus Christ to do something different after July 9th and 10th. I dare you. For God. For His sake. Listen to what Isaiah writes. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Don't cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for the new thing I, God, am going to do. Let's quit dwelling on our problems. That's the magnificent thing about this, brothers, talking to our elders and pastors that are here. We've we've all, for so long, we've been like this. So long. And all of a sudden, you know, we can't explain what happened, how it happened, but we know it happened, so we know it's of God. That's a fact. And all of a sudden, the blinders were taken off. And I went, oh my gosh. I mean, we were all just like, right? 
edit that. Um, <laughs> can you imagine when Jesus was with his disciples and he said, here's what I want you to do. Here's where I want you to go. And they went, no, <laughs> I can't imagine that. What's crazy is, is that if you've confessed Christ, Matthew 10, 33, and 34, if you've made the decision to follow Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, we just go through the list of Scripture after Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. He's, he directs your life, I hope. He tells us where to go. And, and, and we should not be afraid of that. For He goes with us. Oh, I wish I could tell you. I can't. <laughs> I'm going to cut it short. Yeah, I know. Wow. You answered this, you answered this in your own heart. <laughs> that cracks me. Ugh. Do you believe? And you just answer it to yourself that the Holy Spirit who resides in you, these are for those who have confessed Jesus Christ. And I pray that there are others today that who have never confessed Jesus would say, God, I don't know a lot about this stuff. I, I don't know half of anything. What I do know is I want to live for you. I, I believe the word. I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to step out in faith and confess. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that I will, I will take that chance to confess you so I can have a new life. If, if you're in Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit resides in you, do you think He wants you to set on your blessed assurance? There's no way. Do you think He wants you to hold on to your time, talent, and treasure? There is no way. It's just no way. Because He knows that day of the return what it's going to look like. I've often said to you, one day He will return. The first time Jesus showed up on the scene, he came as Yeshua ben Joseph, the loving father, the caring Messiah. The next time he comes, he comes as Yeshua ben David, a mighty warrior with a sword to stomp out all those who have come against him, all those who have been disobedient. Now, careful here because I know that I will make a mistake today or tomorrow. Every time I'm on my motorcycle and someone gets close to me, I make a mistake. No, just, you, you know, you get upset. And I just say, oh Lord, forgive me. I mean, we're all challenged with stuff. I, what I'm saying, I, because he lives in me, because I'm covered by the blood, I have hope. I have assurance. I know that I'm covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Man, if you're outside of Jesus Christ, you are playing dangerously. Oh, Lord, you're playing dangerously. And if you're a saint who's playing church, you're living dangerously. I know God is still on the throne and he's moving. Let me tell you a story. Many of you know my health story. Many of you know what I've been through the last four years, multiple surgeries, all the difficulties coming from coming back from the dead. It, it, it's just, when I say that, I was on a breathing machine for I don't know how many days. My brother's here. I don't know how many days, but the surgery went bad, and they called the elders in and said, that's over. Bring the family, and he's not going to make it. I'm thankful to be here today. I, there was no bright light. I don't know what happened. I just know that God retained me. Six surgeries in 17 months, not much left in here, but I'm happy in the Lord. Amen. I've seen God do some amazing stuff. February, I mean, March the 23rd at 1.35 p.m., I was invited over to Den Bissendal, can't never say his name right, member of the church in Heidi, their home, with many of the people from our Seeds Ministry and three men outside of this community a worship pastor, another pastor by the name of Pastor Kevin, who would have thought, and a guy by the name of Alex. And the team, some of the team was there. And they said, would you come over and we're just going to pray for you? I said, absolutely. Now you all know that I've missed several weeks or a few weeks because of my back. And you know, I went to, 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 to see a doctor, got osteophytus, going to have to have surgery. 
inflammation has to come down. Uh, and if you know if anything about Coumadin, I take Warfarin. You know if you're on Warfarin, you can't take any inflammation drugs. And so there's a whole host of things that they've been getting my back ready to do to prepare. But I said, I'll go over there because I love prayer. People pray all the time. So I went over there at 1.30, 1.35. They began to pray. I, I, I forgot to tell the story in the last service that your daughter, your precious little daughter, she's how old? Two years old. I kept thinking while my eyes were closed, somebody's pulling on my toe. It's their daughter, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. It's so cute. I looked down, a little baby praying over my feet. I'm a conservative pastor. I do not minimize nor do I maximize when it comes to the gifts. They, I want you to understand something. I believe in the essentials. I preach the essentials. I want to point people to the cross of Jesus Christ. I want people to know about the blood of Jesus Christ and what he can do. And there are people who are gifted, but I do know this. The one who can heal is Jesus. He heals. God is in the healing business. And you know, I haven't been able to bend down for a long, long time. I haven't been able to do a lot of things because my back has been so bad and the diagnosis is difficult. I'm praying. And while they're praying over me, I begin to sweat. And I kept thinking, am I sweating because I'm uncomfortable? Well, was I uncomfortable in that setting? Yes, I was uncomfortable. There were just things I, I never heard before. There was, just, there was just activity that I did not understand. And they're laying hands on me, and they're praying. And when they're done praying, I've got this shirt on, and it, I've just sweated it out. I don't know why. And I come up from the prayer, and Pastor Kevin says, how do you feel? I'm standing here, and I said, I, I feel okay. He says, I want you to bend over. I said, no. <laughs> No, he said, I want you to bend over. I said, no, it'll hurt. I can't. He said, bend over. And I, I did this one. <laughs> he said, no, no, bend over in the name of Jesus. And so I stood there and I went like this. Okay. Yeah. I, I just went down like that. I thought, this is, this is nuts. Now wait. Then he said, I want you to twist. I said, I'm not twisting. Because you know if you twist, it hurts, particularly if you've got osteophytus. So I said, I'm not, I'm not going to twist. He said, I want you to twist. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll do a little twist. Now, I'm not going to do the twist that I twisted with them. It'd be silly. But I twisted a little bit. I didn't hurt. Then he said, I want you to run. I said, I'm not going to run at all, which I didn't. He said, do you feel anything? I said, no. I'm overwhelmed by this. I'm overwhelmed by what God's just done. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. Went outside. They followed me outside. Your, your prayer team all stayed inside. Dan and Heidi followed me outside. And I said, I feel, I feel so guilty, so unworthy because I'm questioning what's just happened. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Tuesday, acupuncture was supposed to be at 4 o'clock at Dr. Gordon's, the land chiropractor. That's where I go. And they're doing that to get me ready so it can clear up and I can have surgery. And they lay you on the table. If you ever have that done, they get ready to do acupuncture and they do this evaluation for inflammation and movement of the muscle. And I'm laying on that table and he says, Kevin, you have no inflammation. You, you have no <laughs> muscle problems. What's going on here? And I said, well, let me, let me just say something to you, Doc. I did. I said, let me, and it's Dr. Gordon and Dr. Job, Jason Job. I said, I just have to ask a question before, before I tell you this. What is your faith denomination? How, what, where do you do life? And he said, I'm a Catholic. I went, oh, okay, let me work through this one. He said, what are you? I said, well, I'm a non-denominational Christian church. He said, what's that? I said, non-denominational Christian church. He said, well, I'm very, very conservative. I said, I am too. So to tell you that, I just need to tell you this story. I believe without a shadow of doubt, I was healed on May the 23rd at 1.35 p.m. I just believe that. And he said, I cannot figure this out, Kevin. I said, let's do an x-ray now. And he said, no, we're not going to. What, 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 what I want to do is wait two weeks which when I have that x-ray, I'm going to tell you. But he said, if what happened happened, and I want those people in my office. <laughs> I said, I bet you do. I said, I said, so let's just get the x-ray done. He said, I, I doubt. 
Kevin, medically speaking, that osteophytus will be gone. But I cannot explain what I'm seeing in your back right now. I said, I can't either, so it's got to be of God. So what I walked away from, that this is what I want to tell you. I want to, I want to tell you that God is still on the throne. I'm still that conservative pastor. But I do know now more than ever in my life that prayer is effective. I know that. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. And so I'm asking you to pray for the body of Cornerstone and the challenges that are ahead. That's worthy. That's worthy. That's what we sang about today. That's what you were singing about today. Worthy. Maybe you're here today and you've never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. Our decision guides are going to come up forward right now. You need to make a statement that says, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I accept Him as my personal Savior. I want to live all my days for Him. The Word of God in Matthew 10, 33, 34 says, If you confess me in this generation, I will confess you in the next. But if you will not confess me in this generation, I will not confess you before my Father in the next. That means if you're ashamed of me here, I will be ashamed of you here. Don't mess up something. It's not complicated. It's, we're not saved by works. But there is a, an action step you need to take. And I'll tell you what, God is so loving and so forgiving. Whatever you think you've done wrong, whoever you think you've been, whatever you think, that's the devil messing you up. You don't need me. Just go to Jesus right now. If you're a saint, you feel like you've gone down a rocky road, just say, Lord, I just ask you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I just ask you to forgive me my sins. Let me tell you what, it's done. Boom, done. Don't hang on to it. Celebrate what God does for us.